Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, February 6, 2017. Uh, first item on the agenda is our consent agenda. Minutes of the meeting of January 23rd, 2007. Is there a motion? Move approval. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Second. Mr. Curo. Uh, any comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Abstaining. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. All those mm -hmm. in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstaining? Aye. 3-0 oh, and 1. Uh, next we go to two public hearings for 7.15 p.m., which we're at 7.16 p.m. Uh, performance update for program year 2016-2017 from our Director of Planning and Community Development as well as uh, a vote for a CDBG request for funding for 2017-2018 uh, either from the subcommittee or Mr. Chapelain. Mr. Chapelain. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. So we actually have our CDBG administrator, Julie Wayman, here tonight. Uh, Jenny is at the ARB meeting, so she is not able to be here. But uh, Julie is going to walk through a brief performance update on the current state of CDBG, as well as then allow the, the many uh, applicants here tonight to present to the board if the board so desires. Thank you. If you can just come name and position for the record. Um, so thank you, Adam. Um, so as Adam said, I am the new administrator for the Community Development Block Grant here in Arlington. Um, prior to my start in November, I worked for Project Bread, an anti-hunger organization in Massachusetts. Um, and my position there really focused on increasing access to um, federal nutrition programs for low-income residents here in Massachusetts. <coughs> Um, and as the new administrator for um, the block grant here, I am uh, passionate about continuing to make important programs, uh, public services, uh, facilities, and um, affordable housing accessible to our residents here in Arlington. Um, so as um, I'm sure you all know, Arlington has been receiving community development block grant funding for 42 years since the beginning of the program. Um, each year, about 15% of the program is allocated to public services and 20% um, toward planning and administration of the, of the um, grant itself. Um, so tonight, uh, we would like to submit this year's um, mid-year reports from the subrecipients. Um, as you'll see, a lot of great work has been done um, through the grant, uh, everything from scholarships for um, sports, adult day health programs, to um, creating jobs for teens, rescuing healthy food, and um, redistributing it to our Arlington Housing Authority locations. Um, subrecipients are providing academic support, uh, mental health counseling, adding units of affordable housing and um, providing loans to families to improve uh, their, the safety of their own homes. Um, so we are, um, that's just a quick snippet of what you'll see in those uh, mid-year reports. And then the subrecipients themselves are gonna give you a quick snapshot about how they've been doing this year as well. Um, and we would also like tonight to refer to you the 2017-2018 uh, CDBG applications uh, to the subcommittee for review uh, and funding recommendations. Uh, they will, the subcommittee will then bring them back to you for the um, March 13th uh, selectman hearing. Um, so if uh, this year we've also just a quick, uh, quick overview, we've received 21 proposals this year, um, all of whom have applied in the past. So um, if any of you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, I'd love to give the floor to the subrecipients to give you a little bit more uh, detail on their work. Okay. And, and your last name again, Jenny? It's Wayman, W-A-Y-M-A-N. Sorry. Nice to meet you. It's okay. Um, Thank you. I have a question, but I believe my vice chair may be answering, Mr. Don. Uh, I doubt it. Um, so <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you said there were no new programs applying so far this year? That's correct. Oh, wow. That's kind of surprising. Okay. I actually... Um, Two questions. Sure. First is sort of a procedural one. Am I safe to assume that um, the previous CDBG subcommittee, which I believe was Mr. Dunn and Mr. Byrne, are willing to continue to serve in that capacity? Yep. So mm -hmm. March 13th, you are all coordinating with that. Great. And then um, I would ask the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, um, I know, I don't know, at what point is appropriate, and maybe it's a little further down the road, that uh, I know this board is always, and we've gotten a lot better about looking at year-end or half-year-end or whatever in terms of last year to CDBG requests, how much they requested, how much they spent, um, and, and perhaps this is to Mr. Byrne and Mr. Dunn when they have the March 13th meeting, um, just when you think it's appropriate to look at what we 
um, approved last year if for some reason other funding came in and other monies became available or is that something I'm not remembering in my mind right now that we do later on in the process that um, so I just want to put that on the table to Mr. Dunn and Mr. Byrne or Mr. Chaplain if you know where I'm going with this. Yeah no so that what, what you're describing is exactly what the subcommittee does we look at what the request was last year what the <clears> budget was last year what they've spent to date and then what they're requesting for the upcoming program year and try to make decisions based on that. Um, usually see if, whether it be Julie or Jenny or even the program recipient has some explanations for why maybe those things don't match up or they do match up. But uh, what we do, we'll work through a spreadsheet that has all of those different figures as you outlined them. And then we'll come back to the full board with a rundown of what their request was and what the actual budget that we're recommending to the board is. Okay, and, and again, I would leave it either to my colleagues who serve on the subcommittee or the town manager when we have the February 23rd meeting on other Warren articles. Um, uh, and I don't even know what uh, Warren article number it is, but I know people have um, emailed and contacted us personally or otherwise regarding federal funding, um, what amount we receive and what we anticipate in terms of going forward with that. So um, I'll, I'll leave it to Mr. Byrne. And from our vote at the January 26th meeting that we had to present a Warren article mm -hmm. with the Human Rights Commission around Sanctuary Town, people have been saying in terms of federal funding. So um, I'll leave it to you three gentlemen when we have the meeting on February 23rd, whoever wants to present on that in terms of what the actual, or, or if it's, it's Jenny, Miss Wayland, that says this is what the federal funding is and if you have any uh, comments um, to that regard. So just kind of putting that on the table. Um, any other questions, Mr. Curo? Yeah, just quickly, um, thank you and welcome. Um, uh, my understanding reading the materials is the application deadline for next year was January 30th. That's So we, we won't see new applications coming in. Here. No, not at this point. This is it, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and with that, I think what Ms. Whalen wanted to do was to hear from I'll turn it back to you and that you can be great yes um, we don't have a particular order but if there's someone who'd like to come up and speak Susan do you want to start sure. thank, thank you Sue, good morning you? good morning yes it feels morning yes I, yeah I know uh, soon it will be well, <laughs> this is my second trip back to Arlington that's why I'm confused so it's Susan Carp, executive director of the Council on Aging and I would like to thank uh, the CDBG grant administrator um, past and present as well as the town management for supporting the three programs um, in which we receive CDBG funds. The first one is the Adult Day Health Service. Adult Day Health is providing um, stimulation for those that are cognitively impaired, as well as providing respite for the families who have 36-hour days as caregivers. Um, in the past, we have received $4,000 a year, which enables us to provide about 12 or 13 Arlington residents up to $300 in a scholarship. So we're very appreciative. You will see um, for the committee that reviews it for next year, uh, we have asked to double that so that we can reach 26 individuals. Um, I have a very good relationship with Cooperative Elder Services, who is the only adult day health provider in Arlington. Uh, we recently have done um, a couple of different programs on our, when I'm saying our, on the COA cable program called Living Out Loud. We're wanting to raise the awareness and understanding of what adult day care, adult day health is, uh, the benefits of, and the accessibility um, of the program within Arlington. So may I move to the next, or did you have a question about adult day health? Hmm. All right, um, the next one is uh, our volunteer coordinator. Um, our volunteer coordinator has been fully funded through CDBG for, I think, ever since its inception. Uh, without that funding, we would not be able to do the good work that we do uh, with that. Uh, we have at least 130 volunteers in our organization. Those volunteers, in fact, support the 85-plus the programs that we run per year. Um, our volunteers do everything from, you know, helping to serve food to basically doing some back burner projects, um, whether it's investigating other transportation resources that, that we might avail ourselves to so that we don't have the same reliance on the grant funding. Our volunteers help us administratively. Um, they help us actually even with um, some of the grant administration, believe it or not, some of the record keeping. Uh, it's a fine group of people. 
Um, and when you consider that we serve on a duplicated basis, uh, close to 17,000 a year, that money is well worth it. Um, we're really able to reach out, so I wanna say thank you for that. Any questions about that? All right. Uh, our last one is uh, to support our uh, Transportation Enterprise Fund. So for um, those that may or may not know, so the Council on Aging has a transportation service. It provides rides to and from the senior center. Uh, it also provides medical appointments. And last year, to broaden the base as well as to actually try to generate additional revenue locally is to, we call it everyday living. We started it on Thursdays. It takes um, our Arlington seniors, uh, errands to you know the, the pharmacies, hairdressers, grocery shopping. It became so popular that we actually opened it up on Tuesdays as well. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, our Arlington residents can do something other, even though I'd like them to come to the Senior Center every day, um, they can be a more integral role um, and a part of Arlington uh, by this particular service. Uh, without that funding, um, it would be <coughs> impossible um, to, to run a low-cost senior uh, transportation program. And I'm actually imploring you this year to restore some of our funding. Last year, this particular program took a $5,000 hit. What that meant for me in transportation is that I had to uh, basically eliminate our Friday service. That's not really something I think that we would want to do. Um, now, we do also use funds for the dial-a-ride taxi. So as a part of that transportation money, we do try to leverage in every area. Uh, the dial-a-ride taxi for our Arlington Senior is $5 each way. The van is $1.50 each way. So you can see the additional financial burden just by that $5,000 cut that we had last year. So um, the transportation department is continually looking at other areas of, um, um, of opportunities. When we talked about the volunteer coordinator, he also gets um, volunteers to provide medical rides. So that eases the burden and the expenses on the van transfers that to a volunteer driver who is vetted by us, quarried, we take a look at the uh, driving record, we take a look at the insurance to, to make sure that the, the both driver as well as the, um, the rider are taken care of. So I do want to say thank you very much. I look forward to seeing, yes? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I did have a follow-up question on that one, though. Sure. Um, so I, know, I saw that the state has moved for some of its programs to using some of the rideshare services for some of their, have you looked at, as, at that as an option for some of the services you provide? So as far as the rideshare, um, more of the... I feel, I think I heard that the, um, the MBTA's dial -a ride system, a lot of, like, I forget, the, um, the ride. The ride. The ride has started to use a lot, a part of their load has shifted into uh, ride share systems. Right, and so what we do is, um, we have a family of, ser we refer to it as a family of services. So we have the volunteer driver that sometimes actually helps get our seniors to other places besides medical appointments. Mm -hmm. um, we educate individuals on the ride. Um, as far as, um, you know, we use the dial -a ride taxi service. We're hosting, at the end of March, we're actually hosting a, um, a transportation seminar, if you will. So we're going to be registering those for Senior Charlie Card. Um, we're looking for more volunteer drivers. Um, we encourage people that when they're registering with us to ride, that they also take advantage of the ride. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we educate on every, every which level. And there are times that you can educate and people make choices. And sometimes their choices are also limiting their transportation options. But it's our goal just fundamentally from the Council on Aging is to keep them moving any which way. So to answer, I hope I'm answering your question. <clears throat> that, was a, that was a good answer, but I'm gonna keep pressing on one okay. thing. So I think uh, the ride actually, for some of it, you know, for some uh, of their people who are gonna be served, when they call up, then they, instead of sending, you know, the, what I've seen, you know, what we've all seen on the street, which is like a taxi that has like the ride logo, like a sedan, right. they'll call a ride share service. For the, for the right segment of people. Like they're actually like, you know, subcontracting essentially mm -hmm. the ride share service to do, to do those rides. Uber and Lyft. Like Uber yeah. and Lyft and stuff like that. Okay, well true, well Uber and Lyft. So in order for our, to anybody to use Uber and Lyft, you have to have a smartphone. 
So there are some, there's programs right now being piloted, I think in Brookline and Boston, um, using those services. Yeah. Um, there are, <clears throat> it's a pilot program. Okay. It's a pilot program. I'd like <clears throat> to see us try a few other things, but it can be difficult. I mean, there is also regional transportation. My problem with regional transportation is that even to get to Belmont, it, it creates a longer drive. Um, and that means that our seniors are sitting, you might as well have the ride if you're going to have, you know, a two hour block of time where someone's waiting. Um, so we're, we're still, the, it's a work in progress. Okay. Um, and it's, it's not a perfect system. Um, I wish I could wave the magic yeah. wand and make I, it all happen. I guess I'd, uh, I'd say check out a little bit. I think the ride is being a little bit more aggressive at that. And it just might be something that could stretch the dollar further. And you know what? And that's a good goal. Thank and you. I can tell you that at any one of ours, so for example, our transportation, just to give you some assurances on how we stretch that dollar, we really utilize volunteers to help us with recording the rides, input putting the rides, so then the paid staff is really evaluating the information that's been given, like, does this ride make sense? You know, how are we going to squeeze one more ride in? We always give medicals priority. Lunch at the centers are priority. Um, so good point. We'll do some more homework. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Byrne? Um, I do have one, uh, one question. First, thank you um, very much for this application and your presentation tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at this. What did this program receive in FY17 or last uh, year? The transportation, yeah. thirty-five thousand. And so, and I believe and you said you want to, and it was coming forty, and you're requesting ninety-five thousand, just about. And so, and with that additional funding, it would just be to increase services. The what you had. the the five thousand that I would like restored is to help us put the Friday schedule back. In but, place. but what about the additional forty-five thousand? Well, we've we've always asked for amounts just about at that. It's 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 very difficult to run. I mean, I realize this is how we do it, but it's mm -hmm. very difficult to run a low-cost senior transportation in an enterprise fund mm -hmm. because functionally it doesn't work. Okay. Um, you know, we perform magic. We make it work because mm -hmm. we're we're the can-do people. But um, you know, I do get some grant funding. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, I just got hit every which way. I, I lost money in CDBG. The Sims grant that helps provide to, to offset some of the medical, it went from 15,000 to 13,000. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, I've put out some grant requests. I'm not sure if in the mid-year if it shows versus the new application sure. that I have amounts that are pending okay. that I've requested that I don't know. So there's 8,000 from the Friends of Arlington Council on Aging. Um, that was submitted back in November, and I haven't been able, I have not heard yet um, on the, the standing of that. And, um, okay. No, thank you um, very much. I know, um, and, and we wish we could fully fund every single oh, no, request I, that we receive. Right. And uh, that it's sometimes, you know, that's just not possible. But right. thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if I could sort of piggyback on that, because Mr. Byrne asked um, most of my question. Um, I, I see the 35,000 and the request for 94,000, but I'm hearing it's 35 is definitely status quo and another five. Um, as we go through this process with uh, Mr. Dunn and Mr. Byrne and, and Ms. Wayland, um, I understand pie in the sky, if you could get 95,000, that would be great. But what I'm hearing is please keep the 35 plus another five. I would just whatever process you all have in place when you meet with uh, the co my colleagues from who are on the subcommittee to give them you know the actual bare bones because I had the exact same question I said thir 35 and then I saw the request was for 94,400 or 94,500 so uh, especially where CDBG funding does go down every year um, we used to get eight, nine, ten million, and, you know, we'll, we'll be lucky to break two million. So whatever you all can put in the process for my colleagues who serve on the subcommittee, what the actual um, bare bone number is. And then if there's anything left after that, then, you know, my colleagues can go back and revisit. But if we can really sort of hammer down on, you know, really sh it should be 35,000 is what they got last year. Mm -hmm. Um, actual and then the request for this year I don't want to just throw in any willy-nilly numbers because everybody would love to have two three hundred thousand or ninety five thousand we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't advocate <laughs> I, I, I will say um, chair, Ms. chair it's not 
um, the town who puts these requests in. It's the applicants. Right. And, and, and what I'm saying to the applicants is, which you all are, cognizant of the fact that these monies are going down. Um, and in, in order for, for me, I think, to give my colleagues on the subcommittee the um, best opportunity to fulfill everything, like me looking at that could say, oh my gosh, they got 35, they're asking for 94, how do I get them to 50 or 60, which may get rid of something at Fidelity House, which may get rid of something, what I call the zoo, because I grew up there, but it's known as Monotomy Manor. I didn't know it was called Monotomy Manor when you lived in the projects. So w what I'm saying is where the pot is going down every year, um, whatever information that you can glean from all the applicants, recognizing, you know, we'd all love to have everything funded five times over, but to give them the best opportunity sitting in that chair where they do have to make those cuts. Um, so, because what I'm hearing from the microphone is last year's request is 35. At the very least, we need at least that, if not another 5,000. You know what I'm saying? If you can get those numbers to my colleagues. And then if there's anything left after that, um, then we can go back and revisit. But my thing is I don't, I don't want to eliminate a program and, you know, look at that request and say, you know what, we need to strive to get it to 60 or 70,000, and we're going to cut out two or three other really important programs. Mr. Kiro? Madam Chair, I think it just might be helpful for everyone here just to understand, you know, exactly what we're looking at in terms of um, scale overall, because we all love CDBG. Mm -hmm. But um, we have um, $1.65 million in requests this year, and we're estimating $1.12 million available. So it's probably about a third of what's been requested overall. Somehow, I don't envy the subcommittee. Right, right. That, so. That's Let's try to make their job a little more. That, that's cohesive. that's not that's directed just so everybody understands. I think everybody understands that because we we face this problem okay. every year. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thanks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Name, evening, it, name it and or address or position for the record, whatever. Jada McGuire, co-founder of Operation Success, Monotomy Manor. Beth Arnold is one <coughs> of the supervisors at Monotomy Manor. And I brought her tonight because you're probably sick of hearing from me. So, <laughs> But I will tell you, um, we're going into our 18th year down at Monotomy Manor, servicing middle school and high school kids um, nightly, Monday through Thursday nights from 7 to 8.30. Um, to help them with their homework and meeting academic expectations of the school and having them become a part of the um, Arlington community. Um, this year we're requesting 6,000 like we did last year. Um, we have approximately spent about 2,000 right now. Um, we have some nice programs coming up with the Arlington Police, um, with the boys and girls meetings um, and girls night. We offer them a night with pizza or, you know, something to eat, and then we have an integral part of the uh, community to talk about how we can make things better for them and their families. I'm going to turn it over to Beth um, so she can just talk a little bit about the program and how it's going this year. We have quite a few kids this year again. Good evening, everyone. Um, so this is my third year volunteering. You are Beth? I'm Beth Arnold. Thank you. Um, I'm an Arlington resident. Um, I actually am a teacher, but I'm not a teacher in Arlington. Um, so I use this as an opportunity to give back to my own community. Um, so this is my third year volunteering down there. And I have to say that um, it's probably one of the busiest years that we've had. Um, there's a ton of sixth graders that are just now entering and old enough to be a part of the um, Operation Success community. And I think we're off to a great start. They're very motivated. Um, our goal, I think, is really for these kids to have access to just opportunities that not everyone is able to kind of gain from. Um, there's lots of volunteers from the Audison Middle School. There's myself. And there's additional just Arlington residents who are looking to give back um, and sort of make a difference in these kids' lives. And I think one of the main things that I try to tell these kids, these students, is that you have a gift. And um, don't, don't waste this gift. You have such an opportunity that not every, every student has. And I think they, they do understand that. They know that. Um, they have the opportunity to get help from 
possibly their own teacher at night after school um, without having to stay after school to kind of have a break from school during the day and come by um, and get help with their math homework or to get help with their um, science project that's coming up. And really our goal at the end of the year is for them to realize that it's not just the volunteers who want to give back. We want to try and create opportunities for them to give back as well, for them to kind of, you know, when it's snowing outside, for them to go out and volunteer and shovel sidewalks and, you know, pick up trash at the local parks, that sort of stuff, um, to hopefully recycle this volunteering of, you know, the older people volunteering and then for them to go back and volunteer in their own community as well. Um, so we're off to a great start, like Janet said. There's lots of kids down there. Um, we try to incorporate fun things and not just the learning all the time and um, take them to new experiences, bring them to place, places where they normally might not be able to go um, and give them something to look forward to. You know, if you come a certain amount of times, if you bring up your grades or maintain a certain grade, you know, you have this opportunity to have take part in our mid-year celebration where we sort of recognize those students who have been working really hard and um, and it shows and I think that they gain confidence um, as they're working throughout the year but so far I think um, it's great right now there's 28 students enrolled mm -hmm. and at every night is averaging like eight to ten students um, coming in at different nights there's 16 volunteers Besides a supervisor, there's four uh, teachers or community residents from Arlington that volunteer their nights um, every night. So, again, we would appreciate you considering us, and thank you very much for your past support. And just one pr sort of procedural question. Are you all Monday to Wednesday, Monday to Thursday? And if I'm or Monday, Mon Monday through Thursday. Thursday. And if I'm a brand new family that moved into Monotomy Manor or the projects, right. how do I... Uh, contact. Janet Doyle or John Griffin, but Janet Doyle the housing. mostly, she will send us a note, send me an email and say this new family is coming in. We have a parent night that they came at the beginning of the night in open house. Um, we also have, if a student needs some parental support and they're not getting it or we see that something's not going right, the parents are invited over. Um, we also always, always send out you know, updates to the parents if there's a new student, you know, a new family moving in. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's going Thank great you again, forever, so. Janet, and, and thank, thank you, you for so coming on with us. Any other questions? Always. No? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank um, you. Charlotte? <clears throat> Name and address or position for the record, please. Hi. Hi. Just say your name and. She's not on this. She's on a parking space. Oh, oh! I thought you were here for CDBG. No. Oh, sorry. I, I saw you getting up. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I apologize. I thought but you. I okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any extra cash? Uh, anyone else here who would like to uh, just come right up and? How are you? I'm Deanne Dupont, co-founder of Foodlink, and uh, thank you for your past support. What I'd like to do is just tell you a little bit about what we do here in Arlington and then go into uh, what the request is about. So what we do for here in Arlington is we provide fresh, uh, nutritious food to over 2,000 Arlington residents and young people attending programs here in Arlington. And uh, we deliver over 200,000 pounds <clears throat> of nutritious food each year through 11 Arlington nonprofit agencies and housing facilities. Part of our mission is to remove accessibility barrier to nutritious food for people in need. And um, you know, the barriers may be due to transportation, mobility, time, money, or some other reason. And so we uh, deliver food directly to where people live, congregate, attend programs, in the case of children where they play. So we do this through several uh, Arlington agencies, um, some of which are Arlington Food Pantry, Arlington Eats, Boys and Girls Club, the Arlington Senior Center, Fidelity House, and then through four housing facilities in Arlington operated by the Arlington Housing Authority, including Monotomy Manor, Drake Village, um, Chestnut Manor, and Cusack Terrace. And the grant is about uh, for our deliveries to these four locations. And uh, so during this past year, at Cusack Terrace, we increased our deliveries from once, once a week to twice a week. At um, 
Chestnut, Chestnut Manor, we've added produce to the deliveries, increasing the amount of food by either twice or tripling the amount of food when we make a delivery. And we've added dairy to what we deliver to these four facilities. And we anticipate by the end of this fiscal year, we'll have delivered at least 60,000 pounds of food to these four facilities, which equates to about 50,000 meals. We do this uh, for these uh, four facilities. We deliver six days a week. Um, anywhere from one to four facilities receive food in any given day. Um, and we do this by utilizing 120 uh, volunteers, of whom about half of them live outside of Arlington. And we also do this with one full-time person and one part-time staff. And otherwise, we do operate seven days a week. It's just that Saturdays doesn't fit into these housing uh, schedules. So we anticipate, and what our grant is, is uh, we anticipate for the next fiscal year of delivering about 70,000 pounds to these four uh, facilities. And um, thank you for considering our request. Thank you. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I hear, I get really good reviews about your group's works. Thank you okay, very much. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of clarifying questions. So uh, you serve, how, uh, in addition to Arlington, how many towns? We Roughly. serve about uh, 12 other towns, mm -hmm. but 60 to 70% of the food stays here in Arlington. Oh, it does, okay. Because most of the other agencies get one delivery a, a week. Okay, and this grant represents well less than 60% of your budget, is that correct? Oh, y yes, okay. not even 10% of our budget. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, Mr. Carroll. You always have gr great statistics, Deanne. Um, <clears throat> You gave one statistic at the beginning, 200,000 pounds of food. Is that overall in you the No, know, that's in Arlington. In Arlington. We, we collect about 380,000 pounds of food a year, fresh food. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's 380,000. So 190 you, tons? Um, Something like that. Uh, it's a lot. It, it, it's a lot. <laughs> um, that's a lot. That's the official they, calculation. It's yeah, a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the if you the average meal they calculate you know there's all these standards it's uh, 1.2 pounds for meal so that's how I got that you know number of meals. And it looks like you, this this grant proposal is focused specifically on the housing authority locations the four. with a target of 70,000 exactly uh, pounds, 35 Ex tons. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Ex exactly. It's that only in, for that. I, uh, you know, some of you may respect. see what flows through the senior center. We're there four to five days a week at the senior center, three to five deliveries a day right. to the senior center. Yeah. Thank okay, you. thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, um, my name is John Marshall. I'm the director of the uh, Recreation and Parks Department in Arlington. Um, and I am here before you tonight um, with a request of um, $17,000 for scholarships uh, for the Arlington Recreation Department. Um, last year we were awarded $13,000, so I did hear the comment earlier and um, appreciate anything we can receive. Uh, I will let you know we have served um, to date 60 families. Uh, 43 individuals that have utilized our programs, our year-round programs, after school, summer camps, um, things of those nature. Um, we have, in addition to the um, money we receive from the community development uh, block grant, we also assist um, an additional $12,000 in scholarship throughout the year that we absorb in our program. So um, certainly any money that we can receive through this program is extremely helpful, uh, especially in operating through an enterprise fund. So. Um, if there are any questions. Mr. John? Yeah, I, th I think you just answered this, but I'll just say it. So, sure. it, uh, so this grant kind of offsets a cost, a part of the cost that you, you already bear. Correct, okay. yes. Um, what we're able to do with the scholarships is we're able um, to give a certain percentage off to the families that qualify. Um, unfortunately, we cannot offer um, families, you know, say, uh, 10 programs a season, we might be able to offer them three or four, um, but the cost would just be too high if we could give them everything that they requested. So the, we do the best we can because we want these individuals to participate, but um, we, we can't fund every request. Thank you. Hey, thank you, good to see you. How long have you been on the job now? 
Um, two days? Oh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been five months, so um, I've, I've seen you all on TV before. Yes. Uh, so it's actually nice being here in front of you all. We look better in person or on TV? Oh, I bet you don't have that. Uh, no, no I've, I've, I've spoken to several um, of the sports user groups um, who have had some really positive things um, to say about you, as well as a, a few projects in the pipeline, especially around the Ed Burns Arena, Robolot Field, um, which has nothing to do with this. Um, but okay. what my practice would be, and my colleagues, is to speak to the town manager, um, just to pass along the positive words, as well as some projects that I know you're trying to balance, which has nothing to do with CDBG. But I just wanted to pass along, including you know being up at the Agostinos, that um, <laughs> everybody misses Joe, but I'm hearing really good things about you. So I appreciate and, and welcome to Arlington. Nice to see you. Great, thank you very much. It's a, it's a great community, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here. You think? No. <laughs> no, it is, it is. <laughs> thank you. Hey, stranger. Name and then address or position for the record. <laughs> I'm Pam Hallett. Uh, better. Pam Hallett, uh, Executive Director of the Housing Corporation of Arlington. We're here asking for a lot of money, uh, but we have a large project that we're in the process of undertaking. Um, so we're talking about 117 Broadway uh, to go ahead and get a lot of the pre-development work done. So that's a lot of the architectural and engineering work, basically. Um, as well as to get started in construction, hopefully in a couple of years. Um, we are also asking for 100000 in uh, capital improvements for our existing portfolio, which is what we try to do each year. Uh, we, this year, for instance, we uh, replaced some roofs, two roofs. We did some masonry uh, tuck pointing and uh, resetting of stairs at a couple of our buildings. Uh, we rehabbed two units that were very outdated and kind of beaten up. Um, a lot of our uh, inventory is pretty old now, and so it's needing to have a lot of tender, loving care taken to it, so porches, stairs, uh, that kind of thing. So that's what we uh, are asking for. Thank you. Any questions, uh, Mr. Dunn? I feel like the question machine tonight, but here we go. No problem. Um, so sometimes I think in the past with the housing corporation, we've uh, essentially set money aside that didn't get spent in a given year. And we did it knowingly. You know, the, Like we said, we're going to put some money in this year, and we know we're going to put some more money in next year, and then they're going to be able to spend it in the following year. Yes. When you look at the, uh, this year's requests, uh, how much of it is stuff that you're going to spend in this fiscal year and how much of it is stuff that would be that you'd be essentially like in some ways banking for the future? Um, I would say, well, the 100000 in capital improvements definitely we'll spend. Um, I would say probably 400 of the uh, 117 Broadway we will spend on architectural engineering kind of work. It, but we wouldn't, and so... Presumably some of that is coming from other sources than us because we wouldn't be writing the, fo the full. Well, actually, uh, the pre-development, probably most of it would be coming from you. Okay. We have some other sources that we're talking to, but it might be 100000 or so from them. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else here for CDBG? Hello, my name's Lisa Urban. I'm the Youth Program Director at Fideli House. Um, I want to thank you for the support we've go gotten over the years and ask for more. Um, we're just the status quo, 16,000 goes a long way. We use it for three different parts of the program. Um, we try to provide as much opportunity and stability for the kids um, that live down in Manami Manor as possible. So during the summer months, um, we found transportation was one of the biggest hurdles um, to get by. So we send a bus down there in the morning, we pick them up, they come to Fideli House, go to our day camp. Most of them, it's their first experience learning how to swim. Um, and it takes a while, um, but uh, they come to our day camp. And they're really, we go to Minuteman in Lexington, and it really is a day camp setting. Um, they swim lessons in the morning, free swim in the afternoon you know, the fields out there, and it really, it really is away from everything else, and it's a new world for them. 
Um, and then when they come back, we drive them back at the end of the day. And we provide at least two weeks. It's usually three weeks, if not more, of day camp during the summer. They would ask for all summer. It goes for eight weeks, but um, mm -hmm. we're lucky if we can get three weeks out of it. Um, then during the school year, I pick up twice a week down there. Um, then they come back to Fidelity House to get free memberships. They can choose which programs they'd like to do. Majority of it's usually sports programs for them. Um, but Fidelity House offers a lot of different programs that they can choose to do or not. And then um, we also do an on-site program to try to get some kids who parents maybe don't want them. You know, they want them to stay close to home. So we do an on-site program once a week also down there. So um, the money goes a long way and we appreciate it. Uh, we also have another one in there that's jobs, jobs, jobs. We collaborate with, uh, it, it's a application that the kids can choose to either work at the Arlington Boys and Girls Club or our day camp um, during the summer. And Arlington Rec used to do it. I don't know if they still do it. But, um, you know, the kids fill out applications and we're talking teenagers and so they're learning getting a little um, giving back to the community and learning how to work with kids. Okay. And thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well said, thanks. Um, anyone else? So, actually, if people want, if, as soon as they come right up, if there's anyone else that's right behind, why don't you get right behind the next person just to get a sense. Just name, address, sure. name, address, and or position for the record. Derek Curran, I'm the executive director of the Arlington Boys and Girls Club, and I'm going to talk about our um, scholarship program. Last year, um, we received 14,500 in um, scholarship money. Um, we were able to serve 32, approximately 32 families and 50 children. Uh, we used that entire allotment during the busy summer months. Um, we find that parents, um, you know, working parents, have a hard time. Um, you know, finding a you know, fun, safe place f for their uh, you know, children to come. Um, it's not a completely free scholarship. We do do a percentage off to try to serve as many uh, families as, as we possibly can. Um, this year, um, we're asking for 20,000 um, to hopefully be able to serve a few more families or give a little better percentage off or, um, you know, and, and again, we, um, you know, maybe even potentially uh, stretch it out onto the school year, but um, you know, we're able to spend that money pretty easily during the summer months. We also, um, you know, do get um, you know about the same amount of money donated through individuals to help um, get even more um, scholarships to families in need. Um, that's my part of it. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to um, answer them. Uh, if if not, Kevin Flood will speak to the jobs program. Sure. Yeah. Um, so when we get a lot of these requests, we end up like kind of looking at them often in groups because of like when they're similar activities and things like that. <coughs> and uh, your request gets grouped often with the Parks and Rec. Yeah, and sure. so I, I'm sure you heard the question sure, yeah. I asked about. So yeah. I'm curious, is this like an offset or like how do you manage? And I, you just said, I, I heard that you get other donations. Can you tell me yeah. just a little bit more about like, you know, what gets met, what doesn't get met, what other resources do you use, stuff like that? Um, you know, the need is huge. The need gets bigger and bigger every year. And, um, you know, like I said, we, you know, we count on this. If, if we did lose, you know, funding, you know, we'd lose, you know, maybe half of the funding that we would normally have for the summer. Um, you know, we do have, and, and, and a lot of the, um, you know, the summer, you know, funding is it's not just for recreation, not just for a kid to take a swim lesson or things like that. You know, they're for families that really need the care so they can go to work. Um, throughout the year, we do have other, you know, we have other programs after schools and preschools and things like that that we, uh, you know, we have scholarship money, you know, that's set, afi set aside for a lot of the CG CDBG funding it is strictly for the summer months where our need is, is uh, you know, is the highest. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Flood. I'm the assistant director at the, uh, at the Boys and Girls Club, and I'm here to speak for the Jobs Job Jobs program. Uh, you know, first off, you know, thank you for all the support that you've given us over the years. Um, you've been able to help, uh, you know, many, 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 many teens go off and, and you know, 
into the workforce with skills that you know allow them to you know get through their classes in college while they work a little bit uh, on campus or you know graduate from college with the skills that they learned as teens you know in high school um, you know it's each year we you know come across a, a good number of teens that are trying to find themselves in the community. They're, um, you know, like Lisa spoke about a minute ago, um, you know, Fidelity House goes through the same thing. Uh, you know, we're trying to reach as many teens as possible. Um, you know, we have, not every teen in town is, you know, participating in, you know, school clubs, town-wide sports. Um, a lot of times our teens are coming to us as a means of just a better place to be after school, a place where they feel, uh, you know, a part of something. And, you know, we've had great collaborations in the past. We've had um, Whole Foods has taken part in some of our workshops at the club. We've had, um, you know, professors from Bunker Hill Community College, which is a great resource for us and for many of our teens who are finding their way. Uh, we've had uh, a branch manager from Cambridge Savings Bank, Rich Bertolucci, come to us and talk to our teens about the importance of, of budgeting and, and saving money and, and paying yourself first and what that does for you down the road. And, you know, we've also had representatives from colleges. Curry College came to us last summer and uh, put on a nice workshop for our teens, which included both our career launch program, which is a volunteer program uh, for teenagers, as well as our you know, teen jobs or jobs junior staff program. Um, and this rep, this uh, admissions uh, officer from Curry uh, was really proud of what we were doing at the club for our teenagers and kind of, you know, you know, setting a good path for them. And that's really what this Jobs Job Jobs program is about. I know that's what, you know, they're doing over at Fidelity House. I know that's what we're trying to accomplish at our facility. And, you know, at our club right now, we're seeing a huge increase in uh, teen population, which is why we've designated, you know, more space in that building for our teens and in particular our junior staff to give them the resources, the learning center where they can jump on the computer and work on homework and take advantage of things they may not have at home. And I think that this junior staff program, this Jobs of Jobs program, the funds that we receive um, allows, you know, allows our teens, and I said last year, the ability to provide not just for themselves but for their families. And, uh, you know, a few of which come from single family homes and who, whose parents are, you know, somewhat dependent on, on, their, on their children to, to help provide. And, you know, our job is to make sure that they're learning those skills, that they're, you know, feeling their, their self-worth and feeling like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. So um, I guess thank you very much thank for your you. consideration. Appreciate it. Thank Any you. questions? Thank you. Thanks, Kevin, for that, that uh, explanation, all the work that you do down at the club. One thing that I'm, I'm interested in, at, at the risk of possibly having Lisa ask Lisa to come back up, I, I've always understood Jobs, Jobs, Jobs is a collaboration between uh, the Boys and Girls Club and, and Fidelity House. Um, how does that collaboration work? Do, do um, kids who want, want to participate in it submit one application and then you well, jointly go through and... and we, uh, we, used to, we used to go about it that way. Yeah. And then I think what was happening is within, within our memberships, yeah. I mean, I can only speak for the club, but sure. I know within, you know within our membership base, um, you know, there was a demand there as okay. well as, you know, identifying, you know, teens in the community who, you know, are, you know, who may be referred to us as seeking an opportunity to gain employment. And if it's something we can do for them, we can. If not, we may say, 
well, let's let's talk to Fidelity House and see if there's something we can we can do. Um, if, if, correct. They, you, correct. And, you know, a couple of years ago, we did. There was there was a coordinator position okay. who would you know, facilitate this program between the two organizations. But I know in, you know, after talking with the organs, you know, after all of us talking, we thought it was best to, you know, you know, save that money and put that into the program for the kids. Okay. So, so I was just trying to clarify, because I, I guess in, in the past, this used to be a joint application, if I, rec if I recall correctly. So I was just mm -hmm. trying to clarify, because we have two applications of the same name on the program, but Correct. they're essentially yeah, they're separate yeah. programs, yes. maybe complementary for, as far as the community Correct. is concerned. Correct. And the one application does, they can check off which one they're going to work at. So we got the application because of Boys and Girls Club. We can make sure they were there. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything Thank you very else? much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, that might be everyone. I think that might be it. Um, right. Yes, okay. Um, what I'll do is... I guess I'll take it as two separate motions, but I think they're both motions to receive. First motion to receive the performance update for program year 26-2017 for CDBG, moved by so moved. Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Any further comments or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Next, I have it down as a vote, but I think what we're <coughs> going to do, correct me if I'm wrong, is we're going to move to receive the initial CDBG request for FYI 2017-2018 made by... So moved. Mr. Dunn, seconded by. Second. Mr. Byrne, any further questions or comments? If yes. Not, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Byrne. Um, so when I, I do, you know, I just have a comment on, on this whole, you know, application process overall. And, you know, I think tonight we heard, um, you know, <coughs> many presentations on, you know, admiral programs that all deserve funding. Um, I, I do want to note that if you are, you know, following along at home and you'll see, a pretty large amount under the rehab and housing program. Those funds are not interchangeable with the public service programs. So I, I do want to note that while you know the housing, um, say the housing corporation does have a much larger request than say some of these public services, um, we can't just move that funding down and fully fund these public services. And I think it's important that everyone you know recognizes that because we, um, the, that adds to the difficultness of the decisions. Um, that need to be made over the next month or so. Um, and and uh, again, I do wish that, I think all of us wish we could fund uh, you know, every one of these and we see their importance and uh, we look forward to working with all of you moving forward. Thank you. Okay, any further questions and comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And I think I heard from Jenny that the, she and the subcommittee will be meeting on March 13th. No? I think that's when we come back, come back with our that's when we go. Okay, so I'll let you all work out whatever date. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next we go to appointments. Uh, Equal and Opportunity Committee, Andrea Haas, term to expire January 31st, 2020. Uh, if you could come up to the microphone and just say your name and address for the record and sort of give us a bio 101 <laughs> with people who don't have what we have in our packet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Andrea Haas. I live at 164 R Summer Street here in Arlington. I moved to Arlington uh, three years ago uh, with my young children, and uh, the committee put out a request for people to come forward and express interest, and it's the area that I work in, so I hoped that it would be an area that I could contribute that knowledge. Uh, I work in the area of employment law, and so the this committee specifically looks at hiring within Arlington to make sure that we are the committee, or excuse me, the town is meeting its uh, bylaw requirements in terms of minority and uh, female participation in bid projects. I, I, there's a dollar value, I, 200,000 is what's, from, what's sticking in my mind. Um, I've been attending committee meetings for probably since last winter at this point. Um, and uh, it's a very collaborative committee and I look forward to being able to serve it in a greater capacity and I'm happy to answer any specific questions anyone might have. Thank you. We move approval. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by. Second. Mr. Yes. Kiro, was it? Uh, Mr. Dunn? 
Thank you very much. You've got a great um, resume for it, and we really appreciate you putting your time in. Of course. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? If not, on the motion by Mr. Burns, second by Mr. Cure. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We next have an appointment to the Human Rights Commission, David Swanson, term to expire January 31st, 2020. If you could just. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Dave Swanson. I live at uh, 21 Dartmouth Street in Arlington. Uh, my wife and I, we moved here a little over a year ago. We absolutely love it. And uh, I saw this vacancy online, and I thought it was uh, perfect for my skill set and background. And, and so I applied, and that's why I'm here today. I think uh, uh, it's, I'm interested in it for a handful of reasons. First and foremost, uh, the mission of the commission. It's hard to disagree uh, with its mission, you know, about promoting a more inclusive, a more diverse, more welcoming Arlington. Certainly that's in all of our best interests. It's certainly something that I'm interested in and that I saw it as a way to sort of uh, give back and contribute to the community. Uh, secondly, I have a long-standing uh, interest and passion for human rights in general. Uh, in, during undergrad, I studied abroad at the University of Edinburgh. I was accepted at their uh, international human rights program. Um, so I studied uh, there for a semester doing that. That sort of culminated my senior year in an uh, uh, advanced independent study with a professor on uh, the child soldier phenomenon uh, in the international community. While it's not pertinent, obviously, to uh, local issues we'll run into here uh, as a member of the commission, it's, it's uh, an example, I guess, of my longstanding interest in the subject matter. And I think finally, um, my academic background and my professional background, I think, unique me, uniquely position me to be a contributing member of the commission um, in, in two ways. One, I went to law school. Uh, I am an attorney, so I can, you know, I'm not a constitutional law expert, but I conceptually understand what a protected class is, what the, the tiers of scrutiny um, uh, get triggered in, in an equal protection analysis case. Um, so certainly I, I bring that, that legal background to the commission and then professionally I work uh, at the State House as general counsel for Senator Ken Donnelly, who I'm sure you're all familiar with, and uh, on Bless his you. behalf I, I take, uh, um, you know, take part in and try to contribute to the public policy debate that happens at the statewide level every single day and I uh, am confident and I know that a lot of the issues we're facing statewide uh, are some of the same very same questions that the, the commission and certainly the local community will be facing uh, this year and years to come, so. Um, Mr. Kiro and then Mr. Dunn. Oh, thank you very much for stepping up and for volunteering your, your time. I, I'd say that as a, as a former member of the commission as well. I, I think particularly in recent years, um, Human Rights Commission has been particularly active in town, advising us on policy matters and trying to do um, you know, outreach. I, I know that one of the commissioners is fond of saying that the um, uh, good news in Arlington is that they don't receive too many complaints, but that the bad sure. news might also be that they don't receive too many complaints. Sure. Sure. And there is a need to, to, to outreach. That is one of the functions that, that's written into the bylaw. And um, um, <clears throat> it is important, you know, there's, there's a, it's with good reason that the commission falls underneath our health and human services. Um, uh, area and it's important that that the residents know that that is there as as a resource, um, you know, no matter what their background, their age, or or uh, whatnot. So uh, thank you for stepping up. Sure, yeah, happy to. Yeah, Mr. excited. Uh, okay, is there a motion to approve by? So moved. Mr. Burns seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Thanks. Uh, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, stranger to <coughs> us all, appointment to redevelopment board. Gene, Eugene Benz, Gene Benson, term to expire January 31st, 2020. I don't see him here tonight, but. So uh, Gene was not able to be here tonight. He's traveling for business. I, I know the board doesn't like to do this, um, but because of meetings of the ARB and needs for quorum, I'd ask that they consider approving his appointment tonight and have him come to the meeting on the 27th to officially stand before the board. Motion, oh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, he's definitely, he's familiar to me. I think he's a great choice. I'm happy for, to move approval. Moved, second. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any 
questions, comments? If not, all those, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous vote. Thank you. We now get to traffic rules and orders and other business. Uh, first is a request for on-street overnight parking at 55 Brantwood Road. We do have um, the request, if we can ask Charlotte to just come up, name and address for the record, as well as we have a report from the Arlington Police Department Officer Rateau. Excellent. If you um, just want to say your name, address, and brief I'm Charlotte, Pe Charlotte Pierce, I uh, live at 55 Brantwood Road with my husband, David Wilcox, and uh, our two, well, one and a half children. One is returned from college. <laughs> Uh, but he sh we all share two cars. Um, we have a garage built for a Model T in 1921, which is a considerably a tight squeeze for our, our two cars. So we have a, a Mini Cooper and a Volvo XC60. And I think you have the uh, the photograph uh, that I sent. Um, and and they uh, extend to the street across the the sidewalk, and um, that's about all we can do to avoid um, uh, parking on the street. Um, as you may know, the sidewalk is paved in that location, and and I've done some research on why it was paved, and I think it stems from the fact that um, in the 20s, or after the after the 20s when the house was built. Um, people started getting two cars, and they paved the sidewalk to allow that, um, especially the houses where on our side of the street are, you know, we, you all know where it is. Um, so uh, before the curbs and the reconstruction on Brantwood were put in, there was a, a cur sloped curb, which allowed you to drive up on the sidewalk, and, um, and park, so we, we've, we do that, or we've been doing that when we have a lot of traffic coming in and out of the garage, people coming in late at night and stuff. Um, and the advice of, of some of the members of the um, police department, um, they didn't guarantee that we would not get tickets, but they thought it would lessen the likelihood um, and kind of comply with the spirit of the the um, no overnight parking. So the, the, what brought this on was that we got, they, they generally don't ticket us in, unless there's a complaint. So there were complaints four, four nights in a row. That's $100 worth of traffic tickets. And um, so we just thought we would try and um, get a, a waiver of this. Um, I think, Parking up on the sidewalk or the paved sidewalk is probably a better alternative than end to end in the garage because then it it allows some passage of passenger uh, you know pedestrian passage along the sidewalk instead of having to go people having to go around our cars out into the street so that's kind of uh, the re the reason for this request and mm -hmm. I appreciate you considering it I know it's kind of a a humble request in in light of the the uh, more, you know, the CDBG things and all that, but uh, we would appreciate uh, some consideration on it. And I definitely so. agree it's better than blocking the sidewalk because you definitely don't want to do that. And we do have a report. Uh, Mr. Dunn? Yeah, we have a positive recommendation from the police okay. department. Great. Uh, they, the, with the, the highlighted statement, um, no objection to the issuance of one space. We would have reservations about granting more than one space at this time or any other time in the future. It sounds like... You've, you, you, you've made your case successfully for, 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 that, for that space. <laughs> yes, but uh, it's, it, it yeah. sounds like that's probably the limit, but hopefully that, that's, that's, uh, that meets that's the That's totally fine, yeah. I think yeah. expanding so, the garage I don't think is an option. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm happy to move approval subject uh, yeah. to the conditions, of, including noting things like uh, this doesn't count for during uh, snow emergencies and parking bans right. mm -hmm. and uh, that you, you know, continue to use good judgment. Yeah. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by. Uh, I'll second, but I, I will Sir? also add one of those stipulations is um, not parking on the sidewalk. Right. Oh, so just in right on the street? On the street, yes. So okay. Right in front of your house. So they don't want us to crawl up on the sidewalk? No, Correct. not at all. Okay. And, and definitely in front of your house, just not. So, okay. 
Thank if you. it's a successful uh, mo uh, motion. Uh, on motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, now we have a vote regarding opening of the special town meeting warrant uh, for February 15th, 2017. Uh, one of my colleagues would like to make the motion and read the preamble. I just want to. I don't see a preamble. I actually didn't get the. Uh... I didn't either. I assumed the actual wording would be we're opening the warrant for February 15th, 2017 on. Should be from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. On what day? On February 15th. On February 15th? Or so April, 8 in the morning. Or April 26th. So, oh, April 26th, is that what we're That's saying? That's special town meeting. Special town meeting. And it's 8 a.m. to 4 p.m.? Okay, so who would like so to make moved. Moved by Mr. Byrne, seconded by? Second. Mr. Carroll, uh, any further discussion? If not, on yes. a uh, Mr. Dunn, sorry. Uh, what, Adam, what's, uh, thank you. I, if it, I wanna understand what the, I'm sure this is driven by some specific <coughs> business reason. I'm curious what it is. School. Yep, if I may. Uh, two very specific, one, uh, requesting an appropriation for the construction phase of the Gibbs renovation to have the funds available for, uh, before July 1st. We'll most likely be asking for two tranches of Gibbs funding, one, at the special one in the annual because of the construction manager at risk uh, method that we're using for the Gibbs project and also to transfer funds out of the school's special ed stabilization fund to backfill their FY17 budget. Okay. Um, and additionally, um, Murray, what's the, I'm assuming that the part of the goal of doing it this particular date is such that we can have it printed and given notice given with the regular town meeting, is that correct? It would, be, it would be, the regular town meeting is the 24th and the special would be the 26th, so it would be combined in the same order. And what's the printer deadline? March 2nd. It has to be at the printer March 2nd. Is there any merit to waiting a week then? like doing the warrant on like February 22nd, just in case? I think legally, we, tomorrow we have to notify all the, um, the ACMI, the advocate, and all the legal notices, John Wood and what have you, and I think the state law is five days they have to be notified. So you can open it that next, so if we get the letters tomorrow, it will go up to, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sab Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and then Tuesday we can open it. I'm just wondering if we should wait till the 22nd, just because I always wonder if there's going to be, you know, something yeah, else something that else comes in later. Uh, do, do, do you know what I mean, Marie? Is there a reason to not wait to do it the 22nd? That's fine with me. That's yeah. fine with me. I have no problem with that because it would just be the one day and you could... Is there any post I just figure it's a, it's a week later. It it's all the same and it saves us from having the risk of happens. having another, another special. special. So was the or original motion by Mr. Caro seconded by... Uh, who made the original I motion? I did. Oh, Mr. Stephen Burr. Motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by? Uh, second, I'm not sure. Mr. Dunn to open the special town meeting warrant on February 22nd, 2017 at 8 a.m., closing the same day at 4 p.m. for a special town meeting for April 26th, 2017, correct? Any further questions or comments, Mr. Dunn? Oh, I apologize, but just to, so there's no reason not to delay. This it's perfect. It's all the same, right? It's, it's completely okay. fine by me. Then let's yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go to warrant article review hearings. First, we have uh, Article 21, vote for surveillance study group. Um, you can just come up and say your name and address for the record. No. Hello, Steve Revelack, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Okay, and if you just want to, you're here for Article 21, which is um, asking the board for positive motion for your surveillance study group. If you could just give a very brief. Sure. Um, the um, privacy, civil liberties, and surveillance have been topics I've been interested in for a long time, and I've uh, followed for a long time. Now, the article I've proposed does not ask the town to make any <clears throat> policy or regulatory changes. It's simply asking the town to look at some of the issues involved and consider where, um, if such policies might be appropriate in the future. Mr. Dunn. I just, um, 
it's an interesting idea, and I've just, I guess, have you considered, what are your thoughts about like what its scope should be? Like, is it, are you thinking that it should be looking at pro, like um, surveillance done by public entities, surveillance done by companies, surveillance done by individuals, and are you thinking, uh, and what membership are you thinking, or had you got any thoughts about that? Like, can you tell me, fill in a lot, of, like, so the Warren article, as you know, is, you know, one sentence, right? And it doesn't mm -hmm. give us a, a, a lot of meat. So I believe, actually, I believe the Warren article um, mentions surveillance by town agencies. So I was specifically thinking of limiting the scope to town agencies. Um, you know, not to diminish the importance of the others, but I, I think town agencies is a good place to start. What about like membership and other thoughts? Like who should be on the committee? And so in terms of who should be on the committee, um, I would like to, to see, now again, this is something I left open um, because I intentionally wanted uh, to defer to the board, but um, I would like to see someone from the Human Rights Commission um, I would also like to see someone with a legal background because the laws in this in this area are somewhat complex. I would hope to see someone from the IT department or the um, Information Technology Advisory Committee because these are essentially IT projects. And finally, I would hope that the board would consider having someone from the police department also serve on the study group. Um, and if I could piggyback on that, since this is a warrant article request, which means it's going to town meeting, mm -hmm. which means you're asking for town meeting approval, and it would be a town meeting committee, uh, possibly it could be a town meeting committee because you're going this route. Mm -hmm. um, who else would you suggest? It's only because it's, it's your proposal. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but no. um, when you say it's the board's proposal, we're, you're asking us to support your proposal that's going to go to town meeting, which will be a town meeting committee or subcommittee. Okay. So um, how do you envision that so that basically I'm assuming there would also be some other member or members that the moderator and or the moderator and somebody else yes, that you absolutely. designate. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to, you know what I'm saying? So no, th I, this I, is your, it's not for us to, you know what I mean? No, no. I, no and I just want to make sure we send something so that, you know. No, we, um, okay, I named a, a few a few specific people, but in addition to uh, some number of appointees by, uh, say, the town ma manager, his de designee, or the and the town moderator. Mr. Chaplain. Yeah, I, if I if I may, I would I would suggest um, adding a representative of the facilities department because I think the majority of the types of technology we're talking about would be around town facilities, and then maybe um, I guess I would say from what <clears throat> Mr. Revelax laid out, I would have plenty of departmental representation on the committee. So having maybe two town meeting members appointed by the town moderator, since it's a town meeting committee, might be a wise wise choice. Six seven, so that's it on, okay. Mr. Byrne. Um, so, have you been, um, you know, talking to any town officials yet on on this subject, and have tried to acquire any information? Or, or so the just my a, most direct uh, contact has been with the housing authority, mm -hmm. who put up uh, recently 15 cameras in my neighborhood. Um, I in I went to one of their December board meeting. Uh, I've spoken a number t of times with Richard Murray, their um, president, their board president, and with um, the fellow whose name is escaping me, but the executive director. Mr. Griffin. Yes, Mr. Griffin. And I mean, they were they were they were very receptive and willing to talk. But um, you know, to the extent that they did put up cameras outside their property attached to utility poles and light poles, and there was no notice given. Um, now I've. That's one of the things that inspired me to do this. So, aside from the housing authority, I've also had a number of conversation, uh, a number of discussions with Mr. Heim in terms of with town council regarding uh, what might be possible and the appropriate way to go about looking at this. Okay, um, Thank you, um, Mr. Oh, Byrne. Yeah, yeah, no, I um, no. No, no, I'm thinking it. Uh, I'm happy to hear that you you have had a few you know beginning conversations. Uh, I'm wondering if, if we if this is something we, we do support if it has to go to town meeting or if it's you know something that we could pull together here without a warrant um, going for you know kind of moving this process forward it, it might be a way to streamline these conversations um, and save 
sometime at town meeting as well. Um, if, uh, I'd be happy to hear what my colleagues think about it, but um, that, that's kind of where I'm going right now, or even if it's you know, a, a subcommittee of some other, or you know, a working group of some other board that's already you know, um, in place, so we don't have to continue to you know, stretch out our, our volunteers across you know, too many different endeavors, but th that's kind of where I'm thinking right now. Mr. Carroll and then Mr. Dunn. Thank you. Um, yeah, I hear you on that, and I, I'm, I'm just I'm rolling that over my head. I have a couple of questions, though. So first, mm -hmm. are, are you concerned primarily with, uh, you know, a lot of your uh, letter concentrated on um, <clears throat> outside surveillance mm -hmm. and picking up people, you know, in, in, incidentally. Is this intended to also cover interior surveillance in public buildings? My, f my initial concern was um, surveillance in, public, in outdoor public spaces. Outdoor public spaces, okay. Um, my, my next question, and I, I, this might actually be for council, um, you know, as we've laid out here, it's actually nine I've got by my count right now. I've got police, legal, human rights commission, IT, manager, moderator, maybe I'm double counting. Um, facilities and two town meeting members. But <clears throat> the uh, Arlington Housing Authority, anything on their property, I mean, they're an independent authority, so I don't believe that we, we have the ability to, to regulate them, even if we were to make some finding, do we? So that's correct. The Arlington Housing Authority is not an agency of the town for this purpose. It's not an agency for the town in terms of organizationally. We don't control or direct the housing authority. Um, I'm not personally familiar with where they've located cameras. Uh, the selectmen certainly have some say in terms of what happens in terms of uh, public streets. Um, you know, just like you have control over, you know, light poles and things like that. You have some say in that. I'm not familiar with where they've placed them, whether these are um, uh, totally on public property or private property or uh, whether they've contacted the utility pole operators about them, things like that. Um, so. Uh, in theory, there are certain things that uh, laws and ordinances that could be passed in terms of regulating private surveillance of public spaces. Those are obviously very complicated questions. It's even more complicated than public surveillance of public spaces. And that's the reason why I would think that any action uh, would have to be you know, examined very, very carefully. I think you'd have to come up with some idea of what you want to do and what's take an inventory of what the issues really are in Arlington before you can really start to parse them out in terms of are they legally viable to do X, Y, Z about them because you're just talking about a very, very broad and complicated area of the law. You need to have some idea of this is what we think are the issues and these are the things that we're thinking about doing about it. Um, so I, I know that's a little bit of, a, of an open-ended answer, but I, it's very hard for me to... With, with absent some very specific details, it's hard for me to tell you what's legal and what's not legal in terms of the town's powers. And I'm wondering, I don't know if this is inappropriate to, to answer, but that's fine, but uh, how extensive is our use of um, exterior um, security cameras? I, I know, for example, I know the school department uses them in, inside mm -hmm. the high school, mm -hmm. but I don't know how extensively it's used outside. And if we use these on, on a lot of buildings? <clears throat> the only exterior cameras that I'm aware of are on the fire stations. So they're outside looking at the exterior entrances to the fire department. Um, I don't believe they, f they face public areas other than the access and egress of the buildings. I'm not immediately aware of any others. Okay. The public safety building has, I believe, eight. But outside? Outside. Do they? Okay. And lastly, I mean, I think <clears throat> I'm mulling this over. I, I think that Mr. Byrne's suggestion that, that we try to formulate um, a committee, in a lot of ways, it is cleaner, I think, when we, when we do that. We always have such difficulty putting together the composition of, a, of, a, um, uh, of an advisory committee like this, just, just with the five of us. And uh, it's always a very difficult conversation at town meeting when you have 252 people trying to compose a committee it makes the the um it can be done but i i think it, it, pro it might be more streamlined for us us to do that i mean i think one consideration i would hope that any such committee might might consider though would also be 
um, the retention laws. I'm sure there's a lot of law on this already as far as retention of, of uh, security tapes, but I, I know from past experience that at the school department, this was a, a point of contention how long security tapes were uh, retained as well. So I can see that being a yeah. Yeah. policy matter. Mr. Dunn? Well, I'm definitely persuaded that it's worth talking about and worth looking more into. The venue is definitely something I'm thinking a little bit more about whether it be a town meeting committee and kind of playing that out a little bit further. Like, for instance, really many years ago, I was put on the, I was volunteered for the um, Power Municipalization Committee, which was evaluating whether or not Arlington should try to, by eminent domain, to take our power lines from NSTAR because they kept, we kept losing like electricity <laughs> and it felt like we were living in a third world country. Um, and that committee, I think it, served a good purpose at the time, but the mistake I think we made was making it an indefinite committee, and it really was something that we just existed to look at this question for a year or two, and then we could go away. And so I would think, <coughs> thinking about like what the work product of this committee would be, and I can imagine it putting forward a report or a set of suggestions, it's hard for me to imagine doing that year after year for you know five or ten, or, or 10 years. Um, so. I think if you felt passionately that it should be a town meeting committee, I'd really, and that that's the right venue for it to be, I'd really like to hear that case. And other than that, I'd be leaning towards making it to the select ones committee or referring it to the town manager and asking and putting it, listing it as one of his goals. And I'm, but I'm definitely, I'm personally curious. No, I, yeah. I, I, w I think um, having it be a select men's committee or uh, a committee uh, organized through the, by the town manager would be completely fine. <laughs> Okay, so is there, um, on the Warren article, uh, a motion of no action with the, who wants, with the caveat that we direct the town, somebody tell me what their motion is, with the caveat that we direct the town manager? If, may I help? Yes. Well, I, I, why don't I work with Mr. Revelak, town council, and perhaps the chief of police to come back to you at a future meeting soon with a proposed membership that you can then adopt, we can post and fill the committee and get things started. Is, is that amenable to you? I, that is completely amenable, yes. Is that a motion by? So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Dunn, seconded by? Madam Chair, uh, yes. uh, perhaps there's anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak. It's yes. Um, I, but the original motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, is to move no action on the Warren article to town meeting and refer to the town manager. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this? You don't have to, but if you'd like to, you can. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marla Markham, 117 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that you are going to take on um, trying to figure out how to constitute this committee. Uh, once we started noticing these uh, cameras go up in our neighborhood uh, all at once, we were a little alarmed, and so we had done some research, and um, Steve has done most of the work to, um, to communicate, I think all of the work, to communicate with the, with the housing authority. Um, and several of us have also just done some other reading, and I just wanted to, um, to say that all of the research I can find says that security cameras of this nature actually do very little to decrease crime, and they're very easy to abuse and it's very much more likely that people of color and low-income people are going to be heavily surveilled in their own communities and um, I don't think that's fair and I think that if we're that money is coming from somewhere we don't we don't know the source we haven't got we hadn't gotten to the bottom of that before we came here but um, this is an expensive proposition, and I, I found it really interesting to sit here tonight and listen to, um, to, to people stand before you and talk to you about some really important work that's going on in Monotomy Manor with the children. And um, I, I would love to know, I would love for this committee to be charged at some point or to think about, is there, has there been any cost-benefit analysis by the Housing Authority or anybody else? Um, using money that comes from some kind of public source to fund this kind of surveillance of citizens? And has there been any attempt to determine whether those funds could be used 
more effectively and more humanely to accomplish the same goals. Thanks. Thank you. And I think we'll have conversations with Mr. Reverlach and, and the town manager on that, but we also need to be cognizant of or have it further defined. Arlington Housing Authority, this Board of Selectmen is really limited if really has nothing over in terms of the funding that they received is it anything that we control or oversee as far as I know um, and in terms of you know how they have spent their funds whether it's on cameras what I am um, sort of gleaning from the conversation that we're having of voting no action for a town meeting committee have it be a committee of the board of selectmen through the town manager as the board of selectmen does oversee you know public ways and public streets um, and, and we could look at that, and I believe your request, is it just limited to Arlington Housing Authority down by Monotony Manor, or it's no. townwide? Town so we, we need to understand that, but I also want to say with the caveat that I understand and I'm very aware of, you know, the meetings and, and communications with, with the Housing Authority through secondhand information, um, but I just want to make sure everybody knows where we're starting from. When it comes to Arlington Housing Authority, that's a separate entity. If it <coughs> bears out that, it, whether it's, it's the public way, public street um, area, then this board certainly, and, and through the town manager, I can see us having oversight on that. If for some reason these uh, cameras were provided by funding that this board of selectmen oversees, which I can probably tell you 99.9% .9 that's not the case, we, you know, there's not so much we can do about that. About that. So I just want to make sure we're all starting from the same jump-off point. Um, but we certainly will look into, um, I, you know, townwide in terms of, you know, public security cameras that focus on um, public ways that may go sometimes into private residences in terms of front yard, backyard, etc. Um, and Again, um, Mr. Reverliak and others working with the town manager will probably give me a better way to sort of redefine and craft what it is I'm exactly trying to say. Um, do you know where I'm, I'm going with this? Because I think I saw your yeah. hand up, so you might say it better than I am. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right on. Um, and I would say the, the chair is absolutely correct that this board, uh, the, the town in general, can't compel via any governance structure the housing authority to really do anything. But I do think that this committee could meet, come up with a key set of questions as the speaker just outlined, and perhaps pen a letter to the Housing Authority's management and to the board, uh, either from the committee or even potentially through the Board of Selectmen, to at least inquire about some of the questions that, um, that were raised. I, can, will they answer? Can they answer? I don't know, but I think we can pursue the line of questioning. It's a good starting point. Yeah. Is that good? That's cool. Okay. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, any further discussion? Anyone else here would like to speak to this? Sorry. <laughs> Just name and address for the record. I'm Christina Hildebeidel. I live at 123 Sunnyside Ave. I'm also a small business owner in Arlington. Um, <clears throat> I fully understand your points about jurisdictional issues. Um, I bring a somewhat unique perspective to this as um, someone who has many decades of experience in public policy, um, including in civil liberties. I've worked at the, lo the local, the state, and the federal level. Um, and I understand your points about the jurisdictional challenges. Um, but having worked in more than just Massachusetts and understanding the concept of very deeply how public housing works um, and, and, and recognizing that you do not control the housing authority, um, you do carry a fair amount of weight um, with the state. And um, when the housing authority has a camera technically on their property pointed at my front door, that's Arlington property, that's not Arlington Housing Authority property, and I and you absolutely have the ability to make statements on that and to understand what that means, and so I, I understand we're all here, seems to be, we all seem to be agreeing that this should exist or there should be a greater conversation, um, but I do want to, because I have this opportunity, caution you to take very seriously the responsibility you have to make those statements and the state absolutely takes those very seriously and the governor absolutely very, takes those very seriously. And I want to contextualize that within um, <clears throat> the other side of Sunnyside Ave where um, DCR, which is also state property, 
is continually ignored by the state and not um, monitored very effectively, um, cameras or otherwise. And you and I actually had a conversation on the phone three years ago about this when I first bought my house. Um, and we've had countless conversations with uh, the police department. At one point, it got to the point where we were assigned a detective. Um, I've become a little bit too familiar with some of the um, <laughs> officers who patrol. <laughs> um, you know, I have two little kids and a dog, and um, I take civil liberties and civil rights very seriously, and my career absolutely shows that. Um, but I think there's a very serious conversation here to be had, and I, I just really want to caution you not to ignore that while you do not control the Housing Authority, the state has a responsibility to hear all of us, including you, and you have a very key role in making that statement to the state, whether or not you can control the money they spend. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree. And I, I also, as you know, have a background in the legal system being a court reporter and also, unfortunately, a background with DCR, which has been woefully inept and ignores uh, the town um, and have really beat my head against. I, when a previous speaker was in here and referenced he, he worked for the senator, I was thinking maybe I could kind of play some questions in there, but then I thought that's unfair because he wasn't coming in that capacity, even though he cited it. But that has just been no relief whatsoever from that. So I totally um, understand where you're coming from. Um, anybody, even if you, when the parameters are outlined with the town manager in terms of, you know, what the, not machinations, what the makeup is of this committee, um, if you can't commit <laughs> to being a full-fledged committee member and or anyone else who's here on this Warren article, if you can definitely come to, you know, maybe you can say, you know what, I can't make all the meetings all the time, but I can make one or two of them so we can get the expertise and the input that you have. It certainly would be valuable because I agree with my colleagues and, and Mr. Dunn in terms of, you know, this is a committee that, you know, we're going to craft. It's not going to go through town meetings. It's going to go through the Board of Selectmen. And hopefully if we do things right, um, it won't be a committee that meets, you know, two, four, six years out continuously, you know, four, six times a year. Maybe it's something that the committee has set up and um, we set parameters and sort of a doctrine and then we kind of put it there until we need to revisit it again. So I'm, I'm just trying to encourage you and anyone else in whatever capacity that don't be def defined by, you know, when we come up with a, a finite number that you shouldn't be coming to the meetings, especially where I think we're going to do all the work in the beginning and then perhaps with, within the year um, will pretty much be 90, 95% in terms of what we're trying to accomplish as our goal. So thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Me you too. Okay, uh, anybody else? If not, uh, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. So we'll leave it that. Uh, Mr. Revelak, will Steve will um, contact the town manager and set the steps in place to move forward on this. And if I may, I would just like to um, you know, express some gratitude to town council for you know, having a fairly extensive dialogue on this. And you know, I just wanted to acknowledge that and say thanks. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, next, we have more on article hearing, uh, Article 22, Acceptance <coughs> of Legislation, Senior Property Tax Workoff Program. <coughs> uh, first, is there a motion? Well, favorable action. Moved by Second. Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Uh, anyone here to speak to Warren Article 22? Any questions or comments? That's a no. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Article 23, acceptance of legisla legislation, veteran property tax workoff program. Is there a mo motion by? Move favorable action. Mr. Carroll, Second. seconded by Mr. Dunn. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to Article 23? Any questions? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Article 24, acceptance of legislation, elderly and disabled taxation fund, moved by Move Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Carroll. Second. Uh, is there anyone here who would like to speak to Article 24? If not, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kira, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. 
We now have Article 25, acceptance of legislation, CPI adjustment for elderly residents. Is there a motion by? So moved. Mr. Dunn, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to Article 25? And I'll just say to everybody sitting out there, um, we, this board has had previous discussions about this, so it's not that we're just rushing right through this. Um, this is just sort of a culmination of a meeting that you didn't have to listen to before. So if not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go to correspondence received. Is there a motion to receive by? So moved. Mr. Byrne, seconded by? Second. Mr. Curo. Um, it might be in President Mrs. Portius if she wanted to get up and speak yeah. on it. Yes, definitely. Just name an address for the record, please. I was out gardening over, well, Rebecca Portius, 14 Eustace Street, and we've lived there 12 and a half years, and we hope to live there a long, long time. <laughs> um, I was out gardening over the summer and thought there was a detour on Park Ave because about 200 cars came by while I was weeding the verge. And as we talked among our neighbors, we noticed that this flow of traffic continued in the evening rush hour northbound. Various neighbors checked various apps and found that our street was the main artery um, recommended when you didn't want to be stuck on Park Ave. And so as we talked among ourselves, we have 15 children of elementary and middle school age. I live closer to the corner that people come around from Glenburn. We have a child with Down syndrome and we're scared every evening when we pull into our driveway uh, for his getting out of the car. We don't know that he might make a move towards the street. He tries to help move the trash cans in at the end of the evening. We like to encourage him to help with chores. There's a child with severe Asperger's, he's older, but across the street who does very strange things. Some elderly couples. We are worried by the volume of traffic coming up our street. Um, we recognize they're mostly within the speed limit. They tend to text a lot as soon as they get off the highway. So we see about a third of them texting as they go up our street. So we're requesting that our street be closed except to abutters between 4 and 6.30 going northbound, which would be running parallel to Park Ave in the evening rush hour. And during about five months of the year, it's dark during those hours, which makes it much more dangerous for our children. And then when it's not dark, they're playing outside, they're running around. And um, as the lady expressed before, because our houses are old and the driveways are short in our van, we only have one car, but it's long, they tend to extend into <coughs> God bless you. Oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Bless you. They tend to extend into the sidewalk, and when our children are, our three children getting out of the car, someone has to go around the back. If we're getting out groceries, doing normal things, we tend to be close to the road, and we're finding that very frightening for us and the residents. So we're requesting um, that the road be closed for northbound traffic, except abutters between 4 and 6.30 p.m. Okay. Um, Excuse me, if I may, I'm going to butter to... Okay, now, I, I you, you definitely can, but I just want to explain the protocol. We're going to receive the correspondence. Yes. We're not going to, we can't, we're not going to vote or anything on this tonight except for what the next step should be, which would okay. be to refer. So you're welcome to come up, but it's right. basically, this is the beginning of the process. We receive the letter, and we'll have a very brief discussion about who we refer this to, and then I'll come back in the future. So, And I totally understand what you say, because I live on Howard Street, which is the Audison School is right there, and I have Quincy, Robin, Quincy and Robbins, and I'm your family circumstance. I'm sort of tenfold what you have, but I don't <laughs> want to go into the particulars with you know my particular family. You know, and ideally, I would love to stop traffic on that street because I have a severe flight um, risk in terms of my family situation. So um, definitely, we're going to accept this into the process, you, refer it on. But you, just so anything you'd like to say, name and address Sorry. for the record. Uh, so Sandra, just... uh, I live at 30 Glenburn Road around the corner from the Porteuses, and I've lived there for 18 years. And in fact, I moved to Glenburn Road right when they changed Bellington Street from a two-way to a one-way coming off a of Concord Turnpike because people were going down Bellington to avoid the light um, at Park Avenue. So right when I moved is when they changed it to a one-way to stop that. So the problem we found is I have four of the neighbors from Glenburn Road that are there, and I happen to live between Eustace Street and Bellington. Um, we found that the Waze app is directing people off of Park Avenue, down Glenburn Road, 
and Eustis is the first street, so people will cut up Eustis to get to Park Ave or to get to Eastern Ave and continue down to Highland. But they'll also continue down Glenburn to Ballington and blow through the stop sign that's at Ballington. And that's a concern we have because our kids ride their bikes in that area and they come around the corner. And I know we have to, we're, we're all out there as parents watching them, there's supervision. And these people are looking at their phones, going through the stop signs, and they also continue down to Fayette to cut through. So I understand Rebecca's position. We just ask that if you close Park Ave, the Glenburn entrance off of Park Ave, mm -hmm. it stops the Eustis, it stops the Glenburn, it stops the Fayette, it stops the Bellington. Pushes it over. Right, and has them go directly up to Park Circle, which is designed to carry that amount okay. of traffic. Okay, okay, thanks. So I'm not objecting to what she's asking for. I'm just asking if you close Glenburn, because if you close Eustis and make Eustis residents happy, Glenburn Road's going to be unhappy because we're going to bear the brunt of that. And we also have about eight kids in that short block between Bellington and Eustis. So we're, we're concerned about that as well. And I did contact the police department and ask them to put a patrol, and they, they told us you have to watch your kids. I understand that. But I think they needed to monitor that, that stop sign situation, and we never saw a patrol car come up to monitor that after we've asked for it. Okay. So that was our concern, is if you're gonna do something about it, if you could look at the whole neighborhood as opposed to just the one street. Right, and you know what, we hear this East Arlington Lake Street? Yeah, and I grew up on Lake Street, and I moved to the Heights to get okay. away from okay. Lake Street. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I now have the similar situation. All right, but do you understand the process right yes, now? A letter has yes. come in. And I know what Mary Street went through to get their, their one ways Okay, but done the process that. right now is piece of correspondence has been sent in. We're just receiving it. That's it right. for now. And, but all right. and I, I sent a rebuttal to all of the selectmen just so that you have our point of view too. We had hoped to do this as a neighborhood and we kind of had been talking. We didn't know that someone else was, was sort of approaching it. We've been talking amongst ourselves to try to come as a group effort and be collaborative about it as an entire neighborhood. We didn't want it done just singly. All right, but let me just explain it. We have a piece of correspondence, correspondence received, this isn't an agenda item. Right. Correspondence received is from the individual on Eustace Street. Mm -hmm. We're gonna receive that and refer it on. If you all wanna send a piece of correspondence to follow up with that, that we'll receive at the next meeting and add on to that, we'll be happy to do that. Um, but right now, it, it- Does my email count or I need to do something more formal? Who did you send it? I sent it to all five of the select. We were, I'll send it Mr. to Marie. Mr. Curl did can, respond to yeah. my email. Okay. I can send it to you, yes. And then I'll put it in. To yes, to I can do that. I got it. You got it? Okay, yeah, so we'll, it. We'll, we'll attach those on. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, thank you for listening. I actually, um, Kristen Murder, 12 Glenburn Road. I actually um, emailed you um, a while ago. Did you receive my request about this? Did you send it through the town server? I've been having issues. I, I actually sent it through the town server and then it said to go through Marie. Right. I, I, Back in January. I, did I didn't not, get a response. Right. I did not get it because I have my own personal email that I give out to people, Diane Mahan at Verizon.net. The town. I think I actually sent it to that. Yeah. No, I, I, know, I definitely know I didn't get it. Can you say my computer crashed? We yeah. lost everything from December, so Because that's not listed. When, when you contact the town, they have you send it to me through town.arlington.ma.us, and I'll get your email address. I'll forward it to you. What's been happening, and our IT person, Dave Good, for me, has been working on it. I'm not getting anything. It's coming through. I just sent him another 14 to ask him, what are these emails that I didn't get? Because it just says, you have received a spam email from the town of Arlington. Okay. And I'll forward that to Mrs. Kropelka. And I'll also yeah, forward to type another one out. Yeah. No, no, you don't have to. I, I think someone else said they received that? Um, well, Sandy wrote one, and she was responded to. Um, yeah. But the other thing that I'd like to add is that um, I've lived in that house my entire life. And um, Chester and Cedar were made one ways back, I think, in the 70s. And so that contributed to the increased traffic on Glenburn. So this new Ways app is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Yeah. And while I can appreciate Rebecca, you know, coming forth for her cause, it really doesn't help the rest of our little village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't, what's the next step? You say that this you is a process? We haven't said it yet. We're gonna, okay. I, I just received it. One of my mm -hmm. colleagues will make a motion to receive 
Someone will second it, and then we'll discuss, do we refer this to the town manager? Do we refer this to Transportation Advisory Committee? Do we refer this to something else? So we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. But we would, don't leave until you hear what. I won't. Okay. Thank Sorry. You. Thank you. 12. My name is Ken Murder. I also live at 12 Glenburn Road. And I was wondering, would there be any kind of like traffic survey or anything like that before any of these decisions get made? Um, um, yeah, Definitely. Because my, my I'm sure I'd be surprised to, to know how many vehicles pass through those through those small streets. And, and I don't think there's any speed signs posted on the street either. Right. No, we'll, we'll definitely take that in consideration. But right now we're receiving the correspondence now from three streets. Someone's going to make a motion to receive it. Someone's going to second it. And then we're going to discuss who we refer it to. And then the rest of that will kick in with that process. We're not discussing it here tonight because it's just on as correspondence received. We're just receiving the correspondence. Is there a motion to receive? Oh, there is a motion. Oh, to oh Mr. Byrne, seconded table. by Mr. Carroll. Okay, yeah. Mr. Carroll, did you? Um, I don't know if this is appropriate for the police department or TAC. Mr. Chapterlane? I, I would, if the board is so inclined, if you would, if you'd refer it to me, I can have the assistant town manager work with the police department figure out what the best step is to perhaps do some traffic counts as an initial step, look at that, and then come back with any potential recommendations. What he said. Okay. I'm Perfect. Can I say one thing? Can I say I actually agree with them that it would be better to have the sign at Park, but since I didn't live there, I didn't say that. Okay. All right, but we're not. <laughs> so I agree with right. your Right, thank you. Yeah, but, but we're not, what we're voting right now is we received the correspondence, we're referring it to the town manager, who will work with the deputy or assistant town manager and contact you all, as well as um, any necessary uh, personnel from Arlington Police Department or accounts or anything else. We can't, under the open meeting law, we can't take a vote or anything except for to receive your correspondence and say, where does it go? It's now in the pipeline. It's referred from us to the town manager. That's the first step. It'll be the second. So um, is, I'm interpreting that correctly. Yeah. Uh, so on a motion, by yes. Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro to receive, receive correspondence refer to the town manager. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. So we have your contact information and you'll be hearing from us through the town manager. <laughs> and, then, and then when you, you know, when it comes to a culmination in the end, then it'll come before the board unless the town manager and you all deem otherwise, and then we'll have the big dis discussion in terms of recommendations as well as maybe other residents from your streets may want to come in. So I, I don't mean to quell it, I just, you know. No, we weren't sure what, what the next step was. We just wanted to make sure that you knew it was a broader issue Definitely. than just that one street. And it's, way, it's ways. I can't stand yeah, ways. <laughs> yeah. Th Thank you. Um, we now come to new business. Mrs. Kropelka? Nothing. Attorney Hein? No new business. Mr. Chapterlane? I actually have no new business. Mr. Byrne? No new business. Mr. Curo? Oh, geez, the pressure's on. <laughs> Just two things. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council has been working with us on um, an arts and culture uh, action plan through the um, community uh, Planning Community Development Department. They've been uh, running some focus groups with uh, businesses and cultural organizations and others, but there's a larger, um, uh, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a focus group or a kind of a feedback session for the public on March 1st in the town hall, 6.30 uh, p.m. So they're looking for anybody who's interested in this to, to come out and, and lend their feedback on that. And just the second thing I would just note is um, we did take an action at the last meeting in response to a constituent that came before us um, where we had uh, agreed that we would um, uh, write a letter to our uh, congressional and uh, state legislative delegations as well as the governor, you know, just outlining some initiatives that, that Arlington has taken and, and uh, um, some of the values that we hold dear and asking for their partnership and support. Um, I did, at the board's direction, uh, draft a letter uh, which was, was forwarded to the office, and it's, um, I guess it's in the office for signature or for um, feedback to the office for, for adjustment. And that's all. Thank you. And if, um, if everyone's in agreement with it, if we could sign it tonight, because I, I believe you emailed it out to all of the office a couple, office a couple days ago. Or if there's any changes, then we can all sign again. Um, Mr. Dunn? Four things. 
If Whoa. You, I know. Most of them are pretty quick, I think. Uh, one had the kickoff meeting of the Minuteman uh, Bikeway 25th Anniversary Committee. Um, working on a, like, there's a whole range of ideas, but I think basically it's going to be like at least a, we can call it a year long celebration. We can actually even call it a year and a half long celebration because it didn't open in Bedford until um, you know, a year and a half after it did in Arlington. So uh, that was a very interesting one. I did the, did the Cover the Vision 2020 meeting oh, for, for, uh, for Steve, mm. and uh, they are doing all sorts of brainstorming about revi like a, drafting a new set of goals. You know, as 2020 approaches, I think they're working on a new, um, you know, re you know re re revising what, that, what the definition of the committee is. Um, also, this morning, uh, Joe and Adam and I were at uh, the Long Range Planning Committee meeting to, revi to look at the impact of the governor's budget on, proposed budget on the manager's budget, and the answer is basically it, it ends up as a wash. Um, there are good things and there are bad things. There are some things that are notably bad that are going to have longer impact in, down the road, such as uh, we aren't getting the increases in education aid that we thought we were going to because we're a minimum um, funding town. And so one of the requests from the uh, Long Range Planning Committee is for uh, the chair to convene a long range, excuse me, a budget and revenue task force meeting to talk to the, our delegation about the importance, not just of <laughs> education aid in general, but specifically the, the floor among other topics. And so the proposed date is March 13th. Uh, is, is that the a date? Monday? It is Monday. It would be, so it would be six o'clock before. We have a meeting scheduled for that night already. Mm -hmm. And uh, it met with, you know, general approval of the, FinCom Capital Committee Planning and School Committee and Comptroller who, members who are present. So I yes. hope that the, the chair would convene mm -hmm. said meeting. You said March 13th. 13th. Yeah. And 6 p.m. is enough time? Yeah, I think so. And if we could uh, convince our delegations to come. So that Maria is saying it might not be the right date. March 13th, we were going to start Selectman's meeting at 6 so that we could. Um, Ginny could come in and talk about the zoning codifications, and hmm. she only can come at six because she feels it will take an hour a little longer. She has to be downstairs for the redevelopment board at mm -hmm. seven thirty. And I missed that up. <coughs> I, th I thought we were on February twenty seventh for that. Well, why don't I uh, make yeah. a motion um, through Mr. Dunn for Mr. Chapdelaine to contact Mrs. Kropelka and. Iron out on the 13th if, if we can somehow have budget and revenue at 6 o'clock and if we can get Jenny or her designee at a different time when she's done with. I anticipate on March 13th we'll really be in the thick of Warren article, so I think we'll be here till like yeah. 9, 9.30. So there must be some point she could slip away and come up here. Or, yeah. or we could move budget and revenue <coughs> task force to March 27th. That's another alternative. March 27th? Yeah. Looks like it's Monday. Oh, I thought you needed it on the 13th. No. Well, I mean, with, that's the date that we've talked about today's oh, okay. meeting, but I, I think people will be... All right. Well, 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 yeah, we'll sort Adam it and yeah. Marie, why don't you all, all right. straighten it out so that... Uh, the, just on the long-range planning, continues to, you know, the our current override and the savings that we've got will run out during fiscal year 20, uh, 20, 2021. 2021. And uh, there's a lot of merit to doing a talking about doing an override to, to support FY19. So, uh, no, sorry, FY20, yeah. which is to, uh, doing it in uh, June of 2019. 19. So we should, there's many, many steps between now and then, but as we all know, it's coming. Are you saying that that will be one of the agenda item for the meeting on the 13th or the 27th, no. or is that just an aside? So that was more just general report oh, okay. about okay. the only, yeah, it was not about the budget resolution task force. It was more about the general statement about uh, the state of our finances. Uh, we can, yeah. Uh, last item. Um, thank you for all your for your patience. Uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback about uh, the sanctuary town resolution, and that's am I correct that it is on our agenda for two weeks, twenty seventh, two weeks from today. Twenty seventh, I'm sorry. Um, I suspect this room is not going to handle all of the interested uh, group. What does the chair have any thoughts? I've been talking with the town manager and, and board administrator, Mrs. Kropelka, about um, 
booking the town hall auditorium for Sanctuary Town as well as probably the Pride Commission Warren article and maybe one other that I anticipate we might need a larger room. Right now I just anticipate those Warren articles we'd probably need a, need a larger room for. If any one of my colleagues um, thinks there's a third Warren article, I don't see it right now, but I think just those two. So my plan is for on the 27th to have it down in the town hall auditorium. Is that all set? So, but I, I would assume you want the whole meeting there, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. But if anyone, right now I just have those two Warren articles as definitely down there because we're going to need the space. And then, of course, I'm not going to have everybody come in for just two Warren articles. I'll add others, but if anybody else sees another Warren article that you, you might say, you know what, that might need a bigger space than here. And then we'll just do the whole that meeting down there. Correct. Okay. Thank if you. That's that okay? Good. Yep. Sounds, sounds good to me. I think, I think that's very wise. It makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, and then I'm, the only thing I would say is at that meeting, if there's anything, whether it's Mrs. Kropelka or the town manager, <laughs> um, since we will have the larger room and have more people there, that you feel should be on the agenda for that night. Just let, I'll just work with you guys and we'll switch it around. So um, <clears throat> um, if not, uh, everybody else up? Take a motion to adjourn by? So moved. Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you.